Well, let's go ahead and get started. So, hi, my name is Brian Tanis. I work for Citrix Systems. Uh, I'm a technology specialist on the Netscaler product. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about Citrix in the automated data set, in the automated data center. So, what we have available in terms of integration, incorporation, orchestration with the Netscaler product. So, to begin. Everyone's got a Twitter. Let's get some word out there. Netscaler rocks. Hashtag Netscaler. Cisco Live Milan. So to begin, what is a Netscaler? Raise of hands. Has anybody worked with a Netscaler? Do you know what a Netscaler is? Well, two. Application delivery controller, maybe an ADC, maybe the ACE. OK. Well. What the Citrix Netscaler is, is it's a way to deliver applications, layer four through seven services. We have a hardware appliance, virtual appliance, and other ways. A couple different platforms. And what we do with applications, we pro provide load balancing, optimization. We're able to do authentication. We're able to do database load balancing, data stream where we'll do a lot of different things. And in here, this is kind of an eye chart, but we'd like to show this off. It shows you know, all of the functionality, everything you know, basically that the Netscaler is able to do. So for example, you, know, you can see that the Netscaler is kind of the center of attention. It's, it's the one delivering the traffic, accepting the traffic, handling the traffic. It has you know, the availability and you know it, it's able to you know see everything within that within the network. So why is it not just a load balancer? What does it do? What's what's the what's the extra extra things? What, what what do you get out of it? So consolidation. One of the big things here is we've got you know multiple different platforms. The Netscaler has always been on the Intel platform. So we've got a couple different platforms. The virtualization platform, our VPX. We've got the MPX, which is our hardware platform, as well as the SDX, which is a virtualized hardware platform. So we've got a hypervisor running on there, and it runs you know, multiple virtual machines, more, multiple virtual net scalers. But with that, we get the advantage of hardware. So we get the advantage of, say, SSL offloading. So we have you know, dedicated SSL chips on there to be able to handle that. So with an scaler, we're able to consolidate. So app delivery, high availability, remote access with the Netscaler gateway. We have visibility into protocols, into what's going on. So you know, that, that's just a little piece of what the Netscaler is able to do. It's cloud ready. I just talked about that, the virtual appliance hardware appliance, as well as that hypervised, uh, hypervisor platform, the SDX. With a Netscaler, we have something called tri-scale technology. So we're able to scale in, scale out. And what this means is we're able to grow. So if you have you know, one hardware appliance and your load or your demand increases, you're able to just apply a license and you know, increase that a little bit. For example, we're able to cluster multiple boxes together to you know, get more processing, more throughput. So just to start out with, I wanted to have a little level set so that everyone could be a little familiar with the Netscale appliance. So to begin, DevOps. It's the big word. What's, what's going on? What, what are we able to do with the network or with the Netscaler appliance in terms of development, operations, DevOps? So to begin, we have some integrations with the Nexus 7K. We're able to attach to that with Cisco Rise uh, and you know, provide automatic pol policy-based routing. Talk about it in a little bit. We have some integrations with the Nexus 9K. That's with ACI. Uh, I'll show you a little bit about our device package and what we're able to do there, as well as the Catalyst APIC EM. So what we're doing. Uh, we have a booth down in the world of solutions, and we're showing off the ability to have a automatic or dynamic QoS policy from the Netscaler to the APIC EM, 
that goes on to switches. And we're able to, you know, provide this QoS policy, uh, you know, to the switches dynamically. So depending on what's happening within, say, in our example, the Zen desktop infrastructure. So we launch a video. Talk a little bit about that later. Other things that we have, IT interfaces for development. So we've got our Nitro API. So the Netscaler has an API. It's a REST interface. So we're able to use HTTP methods and program, configure, get configuration, get statistics from the Netscaler. We're showing that off in the, uh, in the DevNet Solution Center right after this. There's other things on the box as well, action analytics and app flow. So we're able to get more statistics and whatnot. So what about Citrix and Cisco? What do we do? What, what are the integrations that we have in terms of APIs and, and SDN? So to begin, Cisco APIC, so ACI. What do we do with the Netscaler? What are we able to do? Well, the Netscaler is able to provide layer four through seven services on the APIC. We do this through our device package that we have. And this device package is loaded into the APIC. We'll talk a little bit about it more later. It's loaded into the APIC, and it's able to communicate with the Netscaler via those Nitro APIs that I discussed earlier. But it does that all through the device package. So you don't have to understand, or well, you might have to understand, but you don't have to know the Netscaler Nitro API. You would know the APIC API. And you're able to you know, utilize that for your load balancing, SSL, AAA, what have you. So all of your different functionality there. So you know, all of those features, you know, they relate to that deep Netscaler policy for integration. It's on a per app basis configuration. So we're able to use ACI to configure applications dynamically uh, within the data center. So the Netscaler and APIC control plane integration. So going a little bit deeper, what do we do with ACI? How do we integrate? So to begin, we get into our ACI. We import our device package. Detail it a little bit more in the next step. So we import that. That device package consists of XML profiles. So those profiles match to features on the Netscaler box. For example, load balancing. SQL load balancing, SSL offloading, AAA, maybe gateway functionality. So if you have Zen desktop infrastructure, you know, providing a secure channel, channel, you know, the SSL 443 port, uh, you know, for example. So that's what the device package consists of. The ACI, the device package communicates with the Netscaler via that southbound API interface, so the Netscaler Nitro API, going back to the basics. The device package, a little more detail about it, what it does. Here you can see the ACI. This is the device package loaded. All the functionality that we have, very full featured, very deep integration. You know, Most things that we're able to do on the Netscaler, we're able to do via ACI as well. We could, have one package for all platforms that we have. Because going back to the Netscaler runs on that Intel platform, we have one code base for all of the various Netscalers, virtual, hardware, one separate you know, code base. Well, we've got one device package because it interacts with the same device, or it interacts with the same code base. There is a separate package for the Netscaler 1000V. If you're not familiar with the Netscaler 1000V, that is the Cisco OEM Netscaler. So it's the official ACE replacement. So Cisco actually sells Netscalers. And you know, the 1000V is the virtual appliance that they have here at Cisco. So the device package functionality provides you know, app delivery, mobile stream, going back to that high availability security. So all the functionality in the Netscape. Next solution that we have, we're showcasing this down in the world of solutions, as well as ACI, is Netscaler and APIC Enterprise Manager. So APIC EM is APIC for your WAN. What it could do is, access control lists or QoS, 
And what we do with the NatScaler, what we're you know, doing in our demo is we have a solution set up. It's got Zen desktop environment, so remote access, remote desktop. The user will log in, play a video. The video, well, the WAN link is congested. So the video playback isn't that great. It's not, you know, it's, it's a little jittery. There's some issues there. Could easily be solved with QoS, but it's a little hard to go through and, you know, manually pick and choose QoS for, you know, the specific client session. So with APKEM, we're able to use NetScaler, which is the point of origin of these connections because it's using NetScaler Gateway. Uh, to the point of origin, it knows everything about the client, it knows everything about the session, and it's able to dynamically push a QoS policy to APIC Enterprise Manager, which then goes out and pushes them out to the appropriate switches, depending on you know, where the client is being connected. So in the example, we've got the application, the QoS policy with the NetScaler pushing it to APIC, and that pushes it out to the appropriate networking equipment. And you know, one of the other solutions that we're also showcasing as well is our RISE integration. So we have integration with the Nexus 7K. 6K and 5K also have been announced recently, uh, and those are coming as well. And what we could do here is use the NetScaler. As just, it, it, it looks and attaches as a service module onto the Nexus 7K, and we're able to, you know, one example would be using source IP, so a client or a connection comes into the NetScaler. The NetScaler is a full proxy, so what happens with every connection in the NetScaler is connections come in, they stop there, they go through processing in the NetScaler, they leave the NetScaler, go to the back end solution. It's a full proxy, so it goes through, closes the connection in the middle, opens up new connections. Well, the problem with source IP is, you know, the server doesn't know where to respond. Well, with Rise, we're able to do automatic policy-based routing, so APBR. And we're able to push our policy-based routes from the NetScaler to the Nexus 7K automatically so that the server, the backend server, knows that it should you know, be routed or replied to the, Nets, or to the NetScaler on the return path. Citrix NetScaler APIs as well as other integrations. So what other integrations? We've seen you know, a little bit of the Cisco integrations that we have. APIC, uh, APIC EM, as well as RISE. What else are we doing? What, what do we have? So I talked a little bit about this, but the NetScaler API, it's very hard, very hard to many of these you know, different technologies. The API, it's called Nitro, and it's the NetScaler interface through RESTful interfaces and objects. And what that is, it's, it's, it's a way to communicate with the NetScaler. You know, it's a REST object, so HTTP connections, using HTTP gets, pushes, pulls, what have you, from your client, from a server, from an automation orchestration server, what have you. You're pushing configuration, or getting configuration from the NetScaler to your server. It's the way to democratize access through the NetScaler through that commonality or that, that common resource, so those REST interfaces. And for example, you're using the URL, so you would have your NetScaler here, Nitro v1 stat LBV server. So that's getting the statistics for a load balancing V server. And what that does is you know, your client or your orchestration server would create a REST request HTTP GET in this case, because we're getting statistics from a load balancing V server, post it to the NetScaler. The NetScaler will send back a JSON payload, so it'll send back data to your client or your orchestration server you know, with information that's going on. With Nitro, we have an SDK to further abstract this. So that's how you would you know, kind of get an overview of how you do it with the REST resources. That's available. There's documentation out there. Uh, ways to get that as well. Well, we have Java, .NET, Python, Perl. There's a there's a couple couple others out there. There's a little you know uh, PowerShell scripts and whatnot. So there are other ways to democratize that or you know get a little higher level. But what they do is translate to the RESTful request that we're going to use to communicate, just like ACI, 
just like you know, all the other methods as well. Even the NetScaler management, the NetScaler you know, web GUI, uses Nitro on the back end to communicate back to the NetScaler, as it should. So for example, communicating with the NetScaler via Nitro, this is a very simple call, a login here. So what we would do is we create a URL to our Nitro v1 login. Right? Here, we have a content type header, so that you know, matches up. We're able to communicate. We're able to tell the NetScaler what we're talking in. And we have our little payload. So we've got information. We're saying login. We provide the username and password. From here, we're able to you know, send out another call that has configuration. Uh, it, you know, it'd be performed the same way. So instead of config login, we would be pushing to, say, a load balancing v server. So we would create a load balancing v server uh, off of the NetScaler via Nitro. So we have NetScaler Control Center. This is a way to orchestrate this. So NetScaler Control Center is an, an orchestration platform that we have that we give away with NetScaler. And what this is is it allows us to manage multiple NetScalers and orchestrate them. It does it via you know, Nitro. We also have attachments to VMware, OpenStack, CloudStack. It's a way to you know, configure and manage the NetScaler that way. The OpenStack integration is part uh, of a recent, you know, a recent release uh, right here. So OpenStack's integration uh, with Neutron's load balancing as a service. So that was, that was announced last year. It came out, fair, you know, it came out uh, in 2014. And the NetScaler driver is part of the OpenStack source code. So NetScaler Control Center sits in the middle. So if you're using OpenStack services for your orchestration platforms, we're able to connect to the NetScaler Control Center and interact with the NetScaler. And how it does it is via the NetScaler Nitro, the, the REST APIs. And that being said, NetScaler Control Center also is platform agnostic, so it works with the VPX and MPX, because it's that single code base. So this allows for a flexible tenancy model. For example, say we have a tenant that requires a high level of standard. They require high SLA, high information, lots of resources. Well, you know, we could go ahead and use NetScaler Control Center with OpenStack or you know, other orchestration platforms to provide, say, a gold tenancy type. So you know, they would have the highest level of service, which we would define. So we're able to you know, provision out more hardware, more SSL information uh, to that uh, tenant. But then say we have another tenant that needs, say, a medium amount. We're able to do silver types of tenancy or a bronze amount. So you know, here, you know, maybe they just require really simple load balancing or something. So we're able to do that you know, via our NetScaler Control Center. So, yes. Uh, yeah, go ahead. You're also able to configure and provision via the NetScaler Nitro API. Yes, but you know, to do that via the API, you're creating the methods and the calls yourself, which is perfectly fine. You're perfectly able to do that. The NetScale Control Center just allows a little easier management and a little easier you know, administration on that side. So you could do it with both ways. Yep. So what are a couple of open source initiatives, things that we've been working on, things you know, that, that we have? So AAA, so we, we have integrations with SAML as well as group policy, so we're able to push uh, you know, policy and whatnot. Uh, the OpFlex protocols. A lot of people might not know that Citrix and Cisco co-authors of the OpFlex protocol. Next coming up, something you know, that, that, we're, uh, that we're working on as well as Cisco is the network service header. So that, that is uh, you know, something that's been talked about, and it's in the works as well. And we're also co-authors of that as well. So in conclusion, what are some key takeaways? So software-defined networking with a NetScaler makes, makes life a little bit easier. We're able to do, we're able to manage and administer the NetScaler multiple ways. It's very open. It depends on you know, what you're using, what you're comfortable with. We're very flexible. 
We have the tri-scale technology, so we're able to grow, shrink, burst, uh, you know, with what your needs are. And finally, features are ready for the cloud. So as I stated, you know, we're, we, we work on that Intel platform. So you know, we're able to run in virtualization platforms. We work with KVM. We work with ESX. We work with AWS. We work with soft layer technologies. We work with multiple different ways, multiple different ways to provision and you know, work with the Netscaler. If you haven't used the Netscaler, there are a few of you that haven't. We have a demo. You're able to go ahead, get a Netscaler, play around, try it out, see how it works. You can go to the URL. If you don't have time to write it down, uh, shortly after the session, I'll be in the STN Solutions booth, which is right across the way uh, to take more questions, take information. I could provide the link, show you a little bit more about the Netscaler and the APIs and what have you. We also provide free 90-day trial, so you know, you're able to try it out yourself for 90 days. Full license, you know, work on that Netscaler. So the last part, Netscaler, APIC EM, as well as you know, our management solution, so the Netscaler Control Center and what have you. you know, we're, we, we have that integration with you know, the Cisco technologies, other technologies, and what have you. So, get out there and start trying the Netscaler. Finally, Netscaler rocks. So thank you very much for attending. If you have questions, uh, I'll be around for a second. If not, I'll be on the SDN Solutions booth to answer and show off some Netscaler. So thank you very much.